Howdy. I'm York Steiner. I'm a University Distinguished Professor and Regents Professor here at the School of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences at Texas A&M University. And it's my great pleasure to be able to introduce to you today Dr. John Michael Cullen, who is a current Hagler Fellow. The Hagler Institute for Advanced Study here at Texas A&M University was founded in 2010 under the leadership of Dr. John Junkins and Chancellor John Sharp with the financial support of John Hagler. The idea behind the Hagler Institute is to bring external talent to Texas A&M University. And Dr. Cullen is just such an example of external talent, and so it's my great pleasure to be here today to be able to introduce him to you today. Dr. Cullen has spent a lifelong career in academia, working as a pathologist, focusing on small animals, but also on comparative aspects, which means looking at all the animals to look also what you can find in humans. My interest in veterinary medicine started early in life. I grew up in a rural area surrounded by wild things and I developed an interest early on in the things out and around me, particularly the reptiles and the amphibians. I used to bring home the snakes and the turtles and frogs, much to my uh, parents' dismay. And over time, my interest in animals morphed. We developed more pets, dogs, cats, and as a consequence, we frequently ended up at the local veterinarian. Uh, Doc Lawson was our local veterinarian, very charismatic character. He was a lot of fun to visit, he was entertaining, and early on I decided that his life was the life that I wanted to emulate, and he was my role model, and that was the launch pad for my interest in my career. After vet school, my thought was that I was going to be a zoo veterinarian, and uh, as a consequence, I decided that what made the most sense for me was a small animal internship because I figured zoo animal medicine is really mixed animal medicine. By the time I finished my internship, I realized that it was 70% of veterinary, incoming veterinary students thought they wanted to be zoo veterinarians and that that was an improbable career. And uh, after a couple applications in that direction, I figured that that wasn't going to work. And then I went into private practice and uh, I enjoyed private practice for the first three or four years. And then I felt that, at least in those days, at the level of practice that I had, we often treated symptoms without really understanding what exactly was going on. And I thought, well, I really want to know what's going on. How can I do that? And uh, a good friend of mine and I had an evening of uh, discussion. And uh, at the end of that evening, we both decided that residency made sense and he went off to do a pathology residency and I trailed behind him to visit a couple times and thought, oh, that looks pretty good. And that was the pivot point where I made my decision to apply for the pathology residency. When I finished up my residency, most of my colleagues were headed to pharmaceutical industry. It was uh, lucrative and in those days it was a pretty secure job. But it didn't really appeal to me. And because my PhD advisor was an MD hepatic pathologist, I had been trained in a wide sort of comparative path background. So I was working with some human material and animal material, and I found that really fascinating. And as a consequence, academia allowed me the freedom to go ahead and, and do that kind of work. So I decided that uh, I'd give it a try, and I gave it a try, and that was almost 40 years ago. It's true that I stuck with my interest in liver throughout the entire course of my career. And I think that the best explanation is that I continually encountered interesting projects to work with. As I was finishing up at UC Davis, I met a researcher from Stanford who was working with some animal models of hepatitis B. And I started collaborating with her and uh, our collaboration was with ducks, and she would send me embryonated duck eggs through the mail, which would stay warm enough, and I could hatch out the ducklings to start my own uh, flock of ducks, and we did some interesting work with the ducks and the hepatitis B, and then I uh, was introduced to a researcher at UNC Medical School who worked with hepatitis B, and we expanded our animal models from the ducks to the woodchucks, and. Uh, I got involved with some more of the infectious disease people at the medical school and it was always liver, liver, liver. So the funding supported liver and the projects one built on the other. So it just sort of stayed that way. And over the years I've continued to work with mostly animal models with liver disease, but in parallel, uh, because of my interest in the research application, my interest in the diagnostic side of liver pathology grew as well. 
So as a consequence, I started to look at exclusively the liver biopsies that came through our service. And over time, I started to collect liver biopsies from other services, from the outside uh, world, and uh, just stayed liver, liver, liver. My first interaction with Texas A&M was as a PhD committee member uh, for a student who was interested in liver disease, so it was a good fit for me. And uh, the interaction was good. I was happy to see the student was strong and things went well, and that kept me engaged. And then I think subsequently I started to read liver biopsies for the GI lab at Texas A&M. It's probably been about 10 years since I've been interacting directly with uh, Texas A&M, and because of that good interaction, I was delighted to get the offer to come as a Hegler Fellow to Texas A&M. The offer, I think, varies from individual to individual. And so the period of time in which you are on campus varies. So for me, the request was a three-year period in which I am not actually in residence for longer than 12 months. I'm not here for very long, but it keeps me reappearing consistently. And that allows us to get some work done and make some progress on things. There probably is no such thing as a typical day. Um, part of my job is looking at liver biopsies, and so depending on when they come in and how many they are, they could take up most of the day or only a part of the day. Um, with the other two pathologists who are in the GI lab, we're working on trying to develop a training set by capturing images of special kinds of cases and variations in those cases so that People can use them as sort of a library. With the uh, ability to scan and capture images, you can then show the sort of spectrum of how certain conditions can vary, which I think is particularly useful to people. But that takes some time to collect. So we're working on that when there's time. Other times I may walk across to where the pathology residents are, interact with them. There's some lectures that I give periodically, and pretty much that's the, that's the melange of things that make up a day. I find the advantage of the Hagler Fellowship bringing together people from different disciplines is it opens my mind to uh, more of what's going on around me and the intersection of things that I'm interested in that they might be. And I can recall the very first uh, Hagler Fellowship luncheon we had. Uh, uh, a researcher across the table from me was interested in an area that overlapped directly with one of the graduate students at NC State. And I put those two into contact. And so there's already some synergism directly from having someone at the same table as you who has a different discipline than what you do. So that's the potential. Pathology is, by definition, the study of disease. Uh, we start from the very beginning of uh, learning what is healthy, what is normal, and then from that as a platform, we can look and see when are things abnormal and what are the associations between the patterns that we see in the disease that's associated with it. There's a lot of pattern recognition, and then there's follow-on tests to help confirm what you think is going on. So basically, there's any disease process and you're trying to understand what's the mechanism behind it and how did it manifest itself in the tissue at the eyeball level or at the microscopic level. Frequently there's a disease in people that we would like to be able to study. And in order to study it, we need to be able to do certain manipulations, so, uh, active infections, trials at therapy, things that would be ethically impossible in, in human beings. So the search for animal models goes on continually. And uh, recently, I've been involved in work with hepatitis C virus. Uh, and that involved me joining the Mammalogy Society of North America to find somebody who had blood from a lot of different rodents. And we screened those samples and we found hepatitis C model in uh, deer mice. And then as we figured out that rodents were a reasonable target, we discovered hepatitis C in sewer rats in uh, New York City and in New Orleans. And those viruses have been useful as a model. And so we take the rat virus, it goes into mice, and we can genetically manipulate the mice, um, regular lab mice. Uh, and then that way we've worked on understanding the mechanisms by which the virus causes trouble and start to develop vaccines because currently there's no vaccine for people. So essentially you just cast a broad net and look for either outbreaks that resemble the disease you're interested in, or you test blood and other body fluids to try to see if you can find a match. 
Well, I think the choice to become a veterinary pathologist as opposed to a human pathologist resonates with the same decision to become an MD or a DVM or a VMD. And uh, I think in the end, if you don't love what you do, then the compensation alone will not make up for it. And the thing to avoid in life, I think, is, gee, I wish I had fill in the blank. And so you have to understand yourself well enough to know where your passions lie. And as long as you can survive on your income, I think it doesn't really make that much difference overall. So if you find something you love and you do it, then I think you're going to be a lot happier than cashing out your abilities for something that simply is more lucrative.